The Earth is a water planet, but global water resources are under attack. From dead zones to acidic oceans and rising seas to vanishing aquifers, our water planet is changing in ways that threaten us all. The good news is solutions exist, and Earth Echo is on a mission to find them. I'm Philippe Fusto. Join me as we explore the effects of acidifying oceans on Earth Echo Expedition's Shell Shock. Coastal Washington is a majestic place, special for many reasons, not the least of which are the unique species that make these cold waters home. But oceanic processes that make these ecosystems so productive and diverse are now making it a time machine, allowing us to catch a glimpse of what the future may hold for the health of our ocean. We know the sea is changing, undergoing a chemical shift that threatens both underwater ecosystems as well as the humans who rely on them to provide the resources that sustain us. Bottom line, our oceans are getting more acidic. The cause is clear, but the future is uncertain. My team and I have come to the cold and rainy Pacific Northwest, a part of the world where the people are as connected to the ocean as almost anywhere I've ever been. In particular, Native American communities like the Macaw are working with scientists to better understand how to manage coastal resources in an uncertain future. We're headed out to Nia Bay on Washington's Olympic coast to rendezvous with scientists working alongside students from Nia Bay High School. These students, who are part of the Native American Macaw community, are taking water samples to see if there are signs that ocean acidification is affecting the phytoplankton community here. Monitoring water quality and describing the phytoplankton community helps to better understand how the ecosystem here is functioning. Liam Antrim, a biologist and toxicologist with the Olympic Coast Marine Sanctuary, leads the team of citizen scientists. What's the purpose of collecting these plankton samples? There's a lot of interesting things just happening in the ocean and this bloom is a harmful algal species that is, at times can produce the biotoxins. Are we seeing impacts uh, from the changing chemistry of the ocean, ocean acidification here already? Yes, absolutely. Um, what, what kind of impacts? Well, the people who are looking at most closely are the uh, shellfish aquaculture industry, and they are raising, uh, they're fertilizing their own eggs and growing them up, and so they've had complete failure in their culture lab. When currents were bringing in more acidic water was when they were having the failures in their cultures. So these aquaculture labs were noticing that when their baby oysters and other shellfish were exposed to more acidic water, they died. So the bottom line is, you know, what, what do we know for sure? Do we know anything yet? We do know that it's going to continue to get worse because of the whole balance between carbon dioxide and the atmosphere and the oceans continuing to uh, absorb a fair amount of the atmospheric carbon dioxide. So. Um, that much is for certain, uh, but the future that it brings us uh, is very uncertain That's for why us. you're doing the science that you do. Yes. Liam and the students are identifying what types of phytoplankton are in these waters because certain types produce toxins that kill fish, birds, and even people. Ocean acidification has an effect on what kinds of phytoplankton survive here because some types are better able to survive in more acidic seawater. Ocean acidification is a process where seawater gets more acidic. This happens because our oceans continually absorb carbon dioxide pumped into our atmosphere. This carbon dioxide, much of which comes from the burning of fossil fuels, causes a shift in ocean pH. This shift challenges shell-building organisms like oysters, crabs, snails, and phytoplankton. When these shell builders begin to disappear because of ocean acidification, marine ecosystems can begin to break down, leading to declines in fish stocks and threatening the food security of millions of people. Next, I went to speak with commercial fisherman Jason Roberts, whose family has been fishing these waters for generations. So how long have you been a fisherman? I've been fishing for over 20 years now. 
Um, and what do you fish for? Right now we fish for um, ling cod, true cod, and flatfishes or mm -hmm. soulfish. Mm -hmm. What we're exploring in this story is the impacts of you know, climate change, ocean acidification, some of these really big problems that are facing the world and, and how the oceans are changing. Have you noticed any, any changes in, in, in the ecosystem, or in the weather, in the environment over the 20 years that you've been working here? Uh, every year is different. We, we see different kinds of fish coming up. Um, this year, um, there's been reports of guys seeing sharks this way. Uh, it's pretty rare to see a shark. He thought there might be a great white shark. Wow. And um, I also saw schools of mackerel, and I've never seen that before in 20 years. But this is the first year I've seen that. Are you worried? Yeah, I worry. You know, I worry not only for myself, but my, for my children, you know, what the battle they're going to be facing in the future. The ocean is kind of a, a key part of, of, of the economy here and, and the culture, right? Yeah. The tribe has been really good at adapting to changing environments over the thousands of years. They've gone from whaling, sealing, and fishing. And then now, um, you know, just within 150 years, we've gone from fishing in canoes to, you know, fishing to full-size boats um, with the latest technology. As I leave Jason, I really understand what's at stake here. For the families here in Nia Bay, it's not just about ocean acidification. It's about toxins from harmful algae that poisons shellfish beds and can put whole families out of work. But it's also about communities that are as resilient as the ocean itself. To learn more about ocean acidification and find ways to take action in your own community, visit Earth Echo International at www.earthecho.org.